In this paper, we outline a method for generating Bezier triangles from a traditional point normal triangle input stream. All Bezier control mesh generation and tessellation is done on chip. Please refer to the paper for technical details. Here we will present some visual results generated by software simulation. Here we show a character from Quake by id Software. The image on the left is an unmodified character mesh. This is the exact data that was used in the original game Quake. The image on the right is the result of tessellating this mesh according to the method outlined in the paper. Things to note are the improved fidelity of the specular highlights and the more organic silhouette edges of the character in general. Here we show a mesh from Quake which required tuning to look right with PN triangles applied. In this case we found that the original data set came out looking too soft in the areas of the axe blade and the edges of the boots. As a result, we added a small row of polygons at the edges of the axe and the boots. This gave the visual result we were looking for with little added effort. Naturally, this tuned mesh is still compatible with a renderer that doesn't perform PN triangle tessellation. Here's an unmodified shambler monster from the game Quake. We will now show the results of performing PN triangle tessellation on this character while it is being animated. Here is the original mesh performing a 24 frame walk cycle. The red and white pops seen at the vertices are the results of Fong lighting calculations done at the vertices. The low number of vertices causes poor reproduction of the specular highlights. The character also has a generally boxy silhouette. Now we add in a second shambler and apply PN triangle tessellation. Here we see 4x, 16x, and 64x the number of triangles. The increase in the number of vertices improves the sampling for per-vertex computation, and the character silhouette is much more organic. In this case, the animation is being done by linearly interpolating between the two adjacent keyframes and then applying PN triangles for rendering. When PN triangles appear in silicon, this load will be split by doing the keyframe interpolation on the host CPU on the low polygon mesh while the graphics processor renders the resulting interpolated mesh using PN triangles. Here we show a skeletally animated character made up of 1,684 triangles. Tessellating to LOD1 gives us 6,736 triangles. LOD2, 15,156 triangles. Pausing the action for a moment to compare different LODs again, we go down to LOD1, LOD0, the original mesh, back up to LOD1, 2, 3, and 4. This increases the sampling rate of the vertex shading computations. In this case, it improves the reproduction of the specular highlights from the three lights in the scene. And finally, we show the original character side by side with the LOD4 character, which has 42,100 triangles.